You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. My name is Sean Wilkie, and along with my awesome co-host, we interview the innovators in the space every week, except for this week. This is going to be a little bit of a strange episode. I hope you're ready for it, listeners. So we've got some big news. Ivan was working on his MBA dissertation, and we've mentioned it several times as we were recording episodes over the last year, he finally finished it. That's right. He finished it. I'm I'm impressed. How to go, Ivan. Yay. His uh, his dissertation was called Lean Thinking in Veterinary Organizations to Improve Employee Experience. So what does that actually mean, Ivan? What, what did you get up to? What did you do? Well, what I was trying is to uh, research other uh, methodologies in other domains that we could use in veterinary medicine to improve uh, just the experience that people are going through during consolidation. And in general, the whole burnout is well known right now in the veterinary industry. And I wanted to look at it from the angle, not just self-care, but from the angle of can we do something different in management? So I kind of researched that topic. That's totally awesome. So I know that we had posted out on the podcast, and I think we had several people respond to your survey. How many surveys did you end up getting in the end? I know you had a goal of maybe a thousand or something. Did you? How many did you end up getting? Yeah. And, and you know, this is where I want to do a shout out to all people that filled out the survey because I was aiming for, for a thousand and we had almost 1500 people reply. And it was, it was all kinds of people. The, the new thing I think about this research was that we interviewed not just the vets, uh, which has been a focus of burnout in the past. We interviewed everybody from veterinary domain. So it was vets, technicians, assistants, receptionists. We just wanted to get a good slice from the industry and just to see a sort of broad view onto the domain. Yeah. So Ivan, I think back to previous episodes where we've kind of got into the topic of burnout in the veterinary domain. I think, uh, yeah, it was the episode that we did with Marie Holowicek. I thought that was one of the most interesting episodes just to kind of understand what veterinary professionals, people in this industry go through and the burnout. So what were the big takeaways, Ivan? What did you learn? So my big takeaway is that uh, the trip to Ukraine with you worked well for you, and you can pronounce Marie's last name. But <laughs> the takeaways from uh, the the study, the, it was interesting. There was I had a purpose to find out uh, whether people in consolidated practices are burned out more than in non-consolidated. That was sort of one part of the research. But there was a lot of good stuff that came out of it. It actually turns out that there's not a a huge statistically significant difference between the two, but we definitely confirmed that the industry is burned out. We used the professional fulfillment index that was developed in Stanford and uh, across all the categories and all the roles in the, in the veterinary uh, claims, they definitely have burned out. The other interesting thing was that they do have high degree of satisfaction by their job. And also uh, there's a high degree of empathy. Uh, so it looks like uh, all the veterinary professionals like what they do. They like their patients. It's not like they hate them, but they really get burned out doing so. So that I thought that was interesting. And and there's three findings that we worked with and sliced, and we're going to release them in, in three separate releases. But one of them is that the younger professionals are more vulnerable to burnout than older. That doesn't make any sense. So younger professionals that have just started, are more prone to burnout than somebody that's been doing it for a while. So is that saying that if you've been a vet for 20 years, you're just used to it and you just kind of take it on the chin and you're good to keep <laughs> going? Like what's going on there? I, I don't know. That, that's what's interesting about research because you can take that now and research that further. Uh, I have my hypothesis around this. I think that, I think it's the character of just generations. And if you think about it, the generations that were uh, less burned out, it was sort of that baby boomers sort of turning into closer to 60 right now. And then the people that are under 40 and, and around 30 plus, they were burned out more. And I think it's because how we now actually look into our professions. If you'll think about in the past, if you became a doctor or a veterinarian or a lawyer, that was sort of, that was you for life. And what I'm seeing across uh, my classmates and colleagues is that after sort of 10 years, uh, specifically myself, I can't do it anymore. I mean, I, I'm super interested in people that are doing this job. I love animals, but I, I don't think I can do this job anymore. So I think it's these millennials that can't stay in one place for too long. I think that there's 
might be something there. But they also have, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in that 30 to 40 year old age group. You're a father or a mother to children. You've got a busy household. There's a lot of other strains that get put on you. So it's interesting. And I guess to some degree, you know, even just through that filter, which is not researched, it's just my opinion. I guess it to some degree makes sense that maybe they would be more likely. I also just wonder if it's the fact that they've done it for so long and they've got used to it because anything that we do for a really long time, we get used to. Yeah, no, absolutely. And this is why I'm saying that it's, it's just opening the door to more research and suggest that that area needs to be explored a little more because um, I, I think that if we have young people that are graduating from vet schools and they, and then they burn out, well, no wonder then we have this whole suicide problem and and we just need to focus on it. And that, that was sort of... Uh, my goal is to focus on what can we do other than just tell people to improve their self-care, work-life balance. All of those things are super important. And we talked to Marie about it, and she's a specialist in the area, definitely definitely not me. But the finding was interesting. Yeah. The the, the second interesting finding that, that we stumbled upon was that actually technicians are more burned out than the veterinarians. And that was my suspicion. It was not the goal of the study, but I'm super happy that we found out because there is, you know, there, there's there's a focus on not one more vet. There's the focus on, you know, veterinary industry, and it's almost always focused on veterinarians. But if it shows that the technicians are even more burned out, I always, in my whole career, I was always saying that the technicians are doing the most work. And uh, we need to pay attention. We need to listen to them. We need to empower the frontline staff. And, and I think that shows in this study. So that's another sort of door for exploration to understand what can we do better to improve the experience of the technicians as well. Yeah, I really wonder if that would translate into human medicine. You know, I wonder if the burnout ver doctors versus human medical nurses would correlate. It's really interesting. And, and you're right, when you jump in and do research, it does just present a bunch more questions. A 90 year old friend of mine that I made years and years ago, he told me that knowledge is like a ball and everything that you know is on the inside of the ball and everything that you don't know is on the outside of the ball. And the bigger the ball gets, what you realize, the more you know, the less you know. And so it's, it's kind of interesting. What else? What else you got? Well, the, the, the last sort of finding was about consolidation versus non-consolidation. And, and, and I'm glad that I stumbled upon this as well, because there's sort of this, you know, there's this attitude towards consolidation now that it's, it's bad and people are having bad experience going through this. And, and I think that if you do it right consolidation could be very positive. So the purpose of my dissertation was to actually first define whether there is a significant difference. But I think that the outcome is still the same, is that if we are finding out that the industry is so burned out, we can't influence one by one clinic. And consolidation is the new entity sort of on the veterinary market and veterinary domain where you can apply management methodologies at scale and I researched lean, going back to your comment on the human medicine, uh, they applied lean thinking a while ago. And the main two things about lean thinking uh, methodology is, number one, it's one of the principles, but I think it's number one, it's actually empowering the frontline staff. And speaking of the nurses in the human healthcare, empowering them is super important and listening to their opinion and giving them power of choice and, um, and just basically creating the feedback loop. And there's other things in lean that are important, but I, I focused on that in my research and, and the sort of literature research part was uh, understanding how that works in healthcare. And I think that we have a great opportunity to apply that to consolidation in the veterinary domain. Yeah, it's so interesting. I mean, the, the whole lean methodology coming out of, came out of Toyota, right? It was, that's where it kind yeah, of yeah. first came up. You know, it's such a common sense approach. And it's so interesting to think that, you know, it can be applied to all of these different industries that are so far away from auto manufacturing. But, you know, it's, it's the whole idea of common sense. You know, if you measure, improve, measure, improve, you know, it, it just makes a ton of sense. So it's interesting that you've kind of tied those things together. Uh, in some cases, like uh, like NHS, which is the central healthcare system in, in Britain, it carries the bad name because when I was applying SmartFlow, and it does have parts of lean uh, in it, the, the workflow optimization that I was doing, in some organizations, lean that was introduced not in the best way, 
a leftist taste when you say lean people kind of they don't like it and they don't know that it's not only focusing on waste because everybody's talking about improving and focusing on removing waste and then with that everybody thinks that you're removing people which is the worst thing to do because you know people is your capital it's it's very important especially in the acquisitions and in the consolidation when you're acquiring the practice your best bet is on the people that work in the organization so the last thing you want to do is to get rid of people as waste and that's what some people think what's happening what you want to do is to implement new processes and focus on their improvement by empowering the frontline staff and that's the whole purpose of the study that i did and sort of goes into the you know the, the startup that i'm working on the the veterinary integration solutions where we'll be applying that methodology into our practices and methodologies yeah it's interesting i'm reading or rereading actually with my entire management team at Takatu. Uh, Scrum and you know it, all of these things kind of tie together. And the chapter that I just finished uh, kind of going through was waste is a crime, you know. And it's really interesting because it it's so easy to take that out of context. Yeah, you know, it's it's not talking about you know like more resources or a crime or you know more bodies. It's it's just if you can optimize, you can improve. And so it's easy to see why it would be taken out of context. Cool. So what are you doing with this next? Where where are you taking this information? What are you doing with it? Well, we found, you know, with uh, with my co-founder, Dr. Bill Griffin, we we researched lean together in human healthcare. So we traveled to a couple of hospitals. We were in um, uh, we were in uh, San Francisco General Hospital. We uh, we visited a couple of lean uh, thinking conferences in the human health sector. And and I really think that there's two directions that I want to take. I want to further their research a little more. And I think that we'll probably conduct some smaller size surveys just to find out more about this whole younger people issue and more about technicians uh, and how they are burned out. So that's, I think, the direction of the findings that I would like to take. I also would like to, to discuss it with uh, people smarter than myself in the domain. I just have findings, right? So I want to go back to Marie and talk to her. I want to talk to a couple of people in the industry, maybe do like a little panel discussion, which we thought about doing through uh, innovation podcast. And then I want to take the lean into a direction of trying to apply that on a large scale organizations, just like they did in human healthcare, because it worked. Yeah. It worked. And at all the levels of organization, and it's again, it's about transparency at all the levels. Uh, in San Francisco General Hospital, it was amazing. We went into the uh, executive training for for their executive team to show us how it works at that level and it was super cool even the ceo of the hospital has the board where they move the tasks and everybody can come in and see what she's doing today and uh, what are her goals and it, it was just so transparent and cool so it's it's certainly an interesting area to research and then see if uh, that will stick in the industry and then ultimately uh you know change something that uh, that may empower the frontline staff to do their work yeah it's so interesting and it's interesting for me kind of listening to kind of like how you went into this you know kind of looking at the lean methodology and then it's also interesting kind of thinking back to some of the conversations that we've had off the show you know about you know safe and scaling agile and how all of these things have not really ever entered the veterinary domain unless they were kind of entering via a software startup that was kind of applying these kind of schools of thought to veterinary medicine. And so that's an obvious question for me is like, after doing your dissertation, you know, if you're an independent vet practice out there, like what are some books that you might look into to help leverage some of these systems, whether it's lean or agile or any of these things, if you're in the vet practice, is there a good dip your toe in the water book that would uh, expose some of our audience to some of the stuff that we're talking about? I think at this small sort of scale at one hospital process, which is totally different from totally different from scaling it to the consolidator, but from the single clinic application of lean i think that uh the recent book that was written by chip ponsford we, ha we had him here oh we had chip on the show yeah, yeah 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 so he published his book it's on amazon i remember he was selling it for like six bucks i hope he's uh, raised the price but uh, it's good i read it and and it's it's direct application of lean and again he's uh, 
way smarter than me in, in the domain, but I think he applied it to the veterinary clinic very interestingly. He looked at it from the sort of system point of view, like an like a big organism with different uh, systems functioning together. So I think that's that's a that's a really good book to read. And then I think that Lean Startup. Uh, by Eric Rice, which is more, it was focused on technology, but going back, if you're building any sort of business, it teaches you how to build, measure, and learn and iterate on the cycles. You can apply all of that to anything you do in veterinary clinic, uh, especially new projects. If you have a running clinic and then you decide, I want to buy an ultrasound. Well, what does it look like? How are you going to measure success? I was always laughing, talking to the veterinarians and ask them, do you have a laser? Everybody bought a laser. And okay, great. Uh, how much money you made with it last quarter? I have no idea. How much did you buy for? Uh, buy it for seven and a half thousand dollars. So they remember how much they bought it for. They don't know how much money they're making with it. So why would you do that? Anything you apply, you have to build and measure, then learn what you've done with it, and then iterate and make you know and continue that cycle. It's the the kaizen. Uh, you should know kaizen really well as a continuous improvement. Yeah, as it is the name of my two kids. Kind of <laughs> exactly. I think. Yeah, it's really yeah. interesting. I mean, as we're kind of jamming on this uh, study and your dissertation, you know, a, a thought comes into my head, which is, geez, it'd be really neat to get like Marie. Chuck, maybe Joel Parker and do an episode, you know, around kind of like incremental improvement and measurement and balancing this all at the same time, you know, kind of having the balance. But it's so interesting because when you measure the right things, you stop worrying about all of the things, you know, you kind of focus in on that one single measurement. Yeah. So I, I think that those are sort of two different audiences. If you will think about, you know, measuring the processes, KPIs and stuff like that, that's more of a management. And I think that Joel Parker would be amazing at that. That that guy is an encyclopedia of, of KPIs and things like that. I think Bill would be a very interesting person to invite back and talk about the KPIs. But I think that if you want to focus on the burnout um, I think that's that's slightly a different audience, but I think to have a panel uh, for this discussion would be one of these sort of outcomes of this study. I, I want to send everybody the results and then see who wants to come back on sort of a panel and do like a virtual webinar or in one of these virtual conferences, I think that we discussed it in the past. So, so I think that would be a good one to follow up. And, and I, maybe a shout out in here, if anybody wants to have a copy uh, of dissertation, I'm happy to send that. It's, it's, I find it interesting, although it's 98 pages of joy, but also we're going to do a little brief articles on it and we'll deploy it through a VIS website, through better integration solutions. And then uh, anybody who's interested on the topic, we can just include you guys in, um, into sort of the follow-up news on this. So um, if you want to leave comments, I guess, if you will go to betintegrations.com and leave your address there, we'll include you in the uh, newsletters about this. There's definitely some interesting findings, Ivan, in your research here. Is there any conclusions that you'd like to share with our audience as we kind of roll into wrapping up here? I guess the main conclusion that I have from the study that uh, that I did is if lean thinking can work in veterinary domain, the main principle that we should apply is create the work environment that empowers people and makes them feel in control. And if you want to learn more about burnout in the veterinary domain, go to vetintegrations.com and on the footer, you can find information about burnout survey. Awesome. Right on. Well, I guess it's an appropriate time to um, seeing how this is a weird episode for us to thank all of the listeners. We're over a year old now, tens of thousands of downloads. We don't know who you are. Um, so reach out to us, you know, via any of our channels. Thanks for listening. And yeah, it's been a, it's been a slice. Thanks Ivan for sharing all of that stuff with our listeners and, and me. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Cheers. All right, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. If you want to hear about our new episodes, please follow us on any social media channel. Also, you can check out our website at veterinaryinnovationpodcast.com. See you next week.